Perfect. Um, can everybody see my screen? <laughs> Amazing. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm just going to take this participants off. Perfect. Okay, lovely. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining us for our launch of Airship Feedback. Uh, it's been a long time coming, so we're super excited. Um, it's actually been part of our Airship um, Atmosphere update, so I'm sure you've seen it, but we've had lots of amazing new features that have uh, launched on the platform, and feedback being one of uh, one of them. I mean, I think it's really, really important to begin with uh, to say that uh, Airship Feedback is a super simple um super easy way to gather feedback. Um, it is in no way um, competition with our closest partners of like the likes of Feed It Back and Yonpingo and HGEM. Um, they are incredible at what they do and really, really in depth. Airship feedback is a great beginner. Or if you want to replace the transactional emails that your booking agents are sending out, uh, that's where Airship uh, really comes into its own with this. It's also a great way to gather all that data in one place. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'd go through really quickly what Airship Feedback is for you guys to see, and then also walk you through how you can actually use it, because we do have a free trial in place at the moment for every Airship user. Um, and I thought if we did it step by step, if you wanted to, you could also run yours alongside and just look at uh, how it looks like for you guys. Uh, perfect. Okay. Lovely. Okay, so Airship Feedback. Airship Feedback uh, will help you capture all of your guest data effortlessly. It all flows into your Airship account in its own feedback dashboard. Uh, it's created by a simple editable form. Every single Airship customer now has this editable form on their uh, dashboard. It's available for you to go straight in and go straight on. I'll show you where you can find it in a second. Um, but it will collect and store all of that data that your guests are giving you as well. So you can see it all in one place. You can also use it if you have, for example, multiple GMs or multiple locations. You can give your GMs and, and uh, maybe guest recovery services a login to your Airship dashboard that only allows them to see the feedback. So they can actually see what their guests are experiencing. So if you, you know, give somebody a KPI on their feedback, um, if you want to inspire a little bit of competition, it's a great way to start. Lovely. Okay. So like I said, Airship Feedback, all of the data that's collected goes straight into a new dashboard that's available. You might have seen the little feedback icon that appeared on the left of your dashboard. It's now accessible, so you can now click it. Uh, and everything flows in and updates for you. So we have your uh, guest sentiment score, your food, drink and service score. There are five. So I will go into everything in more detail when we walk through the actual platform, but this is just a little bit of an overview. They update every 24 hours. And we also have the ability to bring in your live comments from your customers and they update within minutes. So it gives you a really great snapshot of being able to log in, have a look at what the, you know, the vibe or the feeling is in each of your locations um, at a glance. You can do it as a head office look, so everything in your brand, or you can do it exactly like you do on Airship now. You can go into your separate location and then look at each location's um, scores. Okay. Um, so we've in, we've created a couple of new questions that create your feedback form. So they include, like I said, the drinks, the service and the food rating. So they are out of five stars. You have your guest sentiment score, which is zero to 10. And that works very similar to an NPS score. So you have your promoters and then you have your passive. So promoters being nine and tens, um, passive being seven and eight. Uh, and then negatives being zero to six. And overall, it will do the formula for you. So promoters take away detractors and will give you your guest sentiment score. Each of our forms are completely customizable. I'm sure you've all used a airship form before. This sits, just sits as another one. Um, so you can customize the colors of your buttons. You can customize the background, the images, what your actual buttons say, what the questions say, everything. It's super easy to do. And just in this call, you'll see how easy it is. And you can actually have a fully new um, form set up in something like four minutes. Uh, we have also launched two new reports to support this. So you've got your feedback uh, summary and your feedback responses. Um, so the feedback summary gives you per location basis. And that's what this um, extract is here. So you can see your GSS score, um, how many people have responded and their, the overall score for each location. And then on the actual feedback response score, you can see every single feedback response you'd be given at a detailed basis. Um, and you can also see 
the email address, name and contact who has, who's actually given you that response. Uh, and if that contact already sits within your Airship database and they haven't, for example, they've used their email address but haven't left their last name, Airship will fill that in for you. So Airship does its magic, everything gets merged, and you're good to go. Okay, so we're going to jump in to the how do you actually do it now. Um, I'm just going to switch screens. Um, can you all see a brand new Airship dashboard there? Yep. Amazing. I was a bit worried that wasn't going to work, so I'm glad it did. <laughs> um, I'm sure you've all logged in recently and seen our brand new Atmosphere update to Airship. Um, so we've got this new looking dashboard here. But where we're going to start is we're going to start over here in feedback on the left. So if you click feedback, oh, and all your lovely faces are in the way of my actual button. So bear me a second. There we go. Um, so like I said, this is your feedback dashboard. So this is our test accounts. This is the joiners kitchen, which I'm sure you've all seen before in your onboarding. Um, what you have here is the guest sentiment score. So this plots over 30 days. So this gives you your average rating across the 30 days. You can see here, we've got some of our team to fill it in. Um, you know, we've got 50, which is great. Obviously, zero being your um, flat rate, I would say. Minus, you can go from minus 100 to 100. So zero being right in the middle here. Uh, you then have your food rating at five stars. And again, this is an average. Because we are looking at the head office view, this is for all of our locations that set up on Joiners Kitchen. Um, so you can see over the last seven days, we've you know had a zero. We've had a 4.5 on average. And we're about down to zero now. Uh, and again, with the service rating, these update every 24 hours. And then down here, we have our lovely live comments. So these update within a couple of minutes. So here we can see Dan's given us a very nice. Um, oh, actually, he's given me a very nice rating. So that's good. Our Sir Amy was absolutely ace. So these can pull through. And again, let me just move your lovely faces so I can actually scan through all of the ones that have come through in the last couple of minutes as well just to give you a really quick snapshot, um, either you as the marketing team, you as the director, or as your guest recovery team as well. Um, bear with me. Oh, we've come out. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go into the actual feedback form, which you can all edit now. So it is this lovely yellow button here. And like I said, because we've launched the trial, we actually launched a template on everybody's accounts that's not live. Um, but you guys can all now edit it and use it immediately. So if I click edit form here. Perfect. So this is going to give me all of my editable um, fields and questions. So we'll, I'm just going to go through uh, on a one by one and explain a little where it might look a little odd, and but show you where it is. So um, this is our feedback form. So we've named this form, we want to hear from you. So that's the internal name. So that's what was going to appear on all my reporting. Um, and if I want to select that form, that's what it's going to come from. Um, this form is live, so all of you can see it. I will share the actual form with you. So if you wanted to fill it out and see, you can have a look what it looks like as well. So once you're editing, make sure you click active. Um, before you've actually used this, you can click active and then it will give you a share link. So you can keep looking and previewing how your form looks as you're customizing it. Obviously, because you've not shared anything, it's not active for your customer to actually engage with immediately. Um, I'm going to choose that all of the information goes into our head office location on Airship. Uh, that's probably the best way um, because you can also put in a location based question within the form. But if somebody doesn't choose it, it's always best to have it as a head office so you don't get anything mixed up. Um, and then the group on Airship, we've called it feedback respondents. So that's all the information is going to fall into that group when you're looking for audience, uh, when you're looking in your audience folders and groups over here. OK, so we're going to go to fields. That's the important part. So my form has already got things like first name, last name, email address, obviously the important thing. Um, we've also got in here um, feedback location select. So here I've, I can then make this mandatory and I'm actually going to choose which locations to display. So if I have multiple venues, I want to make sure that my customer can choose one of the four locations I have. You can click spe specific location or you can just do all locations. You might for some reason have a, you know, not a location you want to see. You might have a dark kitchen in play, um, but yeah, you can choose a specific one. Or if you just wanted to launch feedback at one of your venues, you could remove everything else and just have that one venue in play. 
and then you click save. These All of these questions can be moved around, drag and drop. We can add a new field. Um, where are we? So here, for example, in our form, we've got what, when is your anniversary? Um, in our feedback form, we don't really want to know that. That's more of a value exchange question that you potentially ask when you're originally getting your customer's data or they sign up for your um, club or VIP access. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this out of our form because I don't think we need it in this in this moment. So all I need to do is click delete and it's gone. Um, I've got date of birth. And then down here, we've actually got the new feedback questions. I'm going to show you what they look like. So this is the food score. So I'm going to show you when you're adding in a question, all you need to do is click field type and all of our questions will appear in this list. So first one here is food score. And then we've actually titled this, how would you rate your, our food? But you can remove that and call it anything you want. You could, you know, how was your grub? How was anything, you know, be more your own brand. <laughs> um, and I'm going to make sure this is mandatory because I want to know how our food was. Um, and then I'm going to click save. You've then got um, how do you rate our drinks offering? Again, you could be really specific with this if you wanted to. You could put how's our cocktails, how's our beer. It will all flow into the drink service score, but depending on your offering, you might just prefer that. You know, you might just want to put how's our coffee um, or something if you're in a quick serve. So it's it's really flexible depending on which part of the hospitality sector you're in. And again, I'm going to make that mandatory. Actually, no, I'm not going to make that mandatory because I might, my guest might have just come in for food and not, oh, I've gone into service and not drinks. But anyway, um, so you've got service score. So how would you rate our service? Again, this question you might not actually want to have because you might not have, you might only have um, order and pay service or bar service rather than um, full front of house service. So you can remove that completely or just not make it mandatory. And then the... How likely, so this is our guest sentiment score question. So it's just down here in the list. We've named this, how likely would you be to recommend us? But you could name this, how was your overall service? How was your overall visit? You can rename it to what you think is suitable um, for your brand. And again, this one I will make mandatory because, uh, you know, that is one of the most important things. How, would they recommend us? Would they come in again? Again, that's another one you could name it and click save. And then the really important one for us all uh, is the opt-in to marketing consent. So this is a field type and it's opt-in. Um, again, you can uh, add your question. So tick here to allow us to contact you or click here to hear more about our offering or our venues. You can make this mandatory. And then, so uh, again, you can add in what message should, should we show someone who doesn't tick to opt in? So you could be like, you're really missing out on all our fun or missing out on um, our new offerings. Uh, and that will pull through onto your file as well, onto your fo uh, form, sorry, not file. And then you can also choose what you would like them to opt into. So you've got email that's automatically clicked, but also they could opt into SMS, all of which obviously is done through Airship. And then just click save. And there are all the fields. Obviously, you can add loads more in if you want, or you can make it as short as you want. You're trying to capture as much data as possible. If your customer ticks opt-in, they will automatically get opted into Airship and become obviously part of your database. If your customer has opted in previously um, and then does feedback, again, Airship will do its thing for you and make that all work. Um, love it. Okay, so there are all the questions. Again, you can drag and drop, you can remove, you can add. Um, we're going to go into the advanced settings now, fun things. So here you can add in your image. So any image you want. So it's a header image. So this is our lovely fake joiners kitchen. Um, and then you can add in your subheading. So this is what's going to appear under your image. And what where are you going to say, we'd love to hear about your visit. You can also say how important it is, how you learn from the reviews that people leave, anything that you want to add in. Um. Here, we've got allow submission if contact already exists. What we want to do is we want to change that to allow users to submit the form more than once. Because what we would like is we would like a review every time they come in. We don't want to just limit them to one time. Otherwise, you're not going to get a fair reading. You're not going to get a fair understanding of that. So I've just changed that to allow them to submit it more than once. Um, 
that doesn't count. Uh, if contacts already exist, show this message because obviously we're allowing them to do it more than once. But if you did only want them to do it once, you can also change that and say, it looks like you've already given us some feedback. Thanks so much. That's completely your choice. Um, once they have submitted their form, you get the option of either redirecting them to a page or showing a message. If you redirect them, you could redirect them to something like your Toggle web store. Um, you could redirect them to your website for uh, further bookings, anything. Uh, all you need to do is add in your URL here. Um, if you click show message, you can type in a message up to 100 characters here. Just go back to redirect. It's really important to put your privacy policy um, URL in, because obviously if you are acting, asking them to opt into marketing consent, you need to make sure that your privacy policy is visible at the bottom. It just links out at the bottom for you. Uh, you can also set up a bounce back email. It's up to you. I mean, in this case, we're going to say no, because I'd like to think our fake uh, restaurant has lots of visitors and they're not all want a bounce back after they submitted their uh, feedback, but it's your choice. And then you also get the option of putting in an email address that will be notified when somebody has given feedback. So if you have a guest recovery team or a particular GM or a bookings team that need to know this feedback, you can actually put that in. And every time a feedback piece is given, they will get a notification as well. So we're going to go into style now, which is this drop down here. So um, because I'm on my desktop, I'm going with my standard theme here, which is just standard airship form. Um, and then this is the input screen, uh, input options here. So this is my preview. This is a live preview. Um, I'm actually going to show you what I mean. So we're going to, this question is hide field labels. I don't want to hide them because I want customers to know what they're, they're actually filling in. So I'm going to keep that show. So this is a field label here. You can change the background color. Um, if I, for example, I'm not going to use it because on this form, it doesn't look the best. Uh, but if I went to this color, you can see it's changing as you type it in. Um, and you can also change the uh, font size, the border, border radius um, and the input color as well. So I'm just going to go back to that lovely light pink. Uh, e99, add back. Scroll down here a little bit. So we've got filled text color and input color. We've got our, is it going to be bold when I hover over it? So you can see the text weight on here. You've obviously got lighter, normal, bold, bolder. And then you've also got your font picker, which is Google Fonts. So there's lots on there to pick from. You can customize your button. So if you hover over your button as well, you can change the color and the text color. Um, you've got a border width if you want a border width around your button which is all, again, all in your colors. It can be anything you'd like. I'm just going to scroll down here. Um, and then you can change the hover color as well in the text when you go over it. And the name, that's the wording that's actually on the button, button as well. In our example, we've aligned our buttons to the center. But again, it's completely up to you. You can do full width, so it sits across the entirety of this box. And this gives you a really good example of what everything looks like all together. So again, you can see my hover over is different. If I type in um, start of an email, you've got a slightly different text color, which sits here. Uh, again, you could do a different font if you wanted to. And then down here, we've got the feedback rating fields. So these include the star colors and the star borders. So if my the back of my... Um, Form is that lovely light pink. I could completely change the color of this if I wanted the stars to be gold um, or anything. So, so you've got the outline. I'll show you in a second on the actual live preview, but you've got the outline of the stars. And then when I hover over it to choose, the stars fill in with that color as well. Um, and then when you're all done, you're going to scroll to the top and hit save. Just like that. Perfect. So I'm going to show you what that form looks like now. So all I need to do is click share. And this is going to give me three links. I've got my share direct link. So this is if I was wanting to put a QR code, for example, in my restaurant or in my bar, I can use this link and make a QR code from it and make a sticker or a little um, a framed image that pop on my bar that says raters while they're in while they're actually in your restaurant. You've also got an embed form. So you can embed this 
feedback form directly to your website on any page, again, asking for feedback. Um, and then you've got this Airship email link. Um, in a second, Gia is going to show us what to do with that. I'm just going to show you what the form actually looks like before uh, she does that. So if I copy the link here, oh, I think I've still, I'm just going to update it. There we go. Go again. Perfect. So we've got here, um, like I said, so here's our image, my lovely light pink background, first name, last name. Where did you visit? So the guests can actually drop down and pick the um, location that they visited. Um, I've removed the anniversary from this. I've got my date of birth. And then if I hover over the stars, you can see what I mean about the border and the fill color. So here I'm going to do three stars, five stars, two stars. And then would I recommend this to a family or friend member? Uh, and again, you've got the hover over color here. So I'm going to click nine. Um, we'd love to hear about your visit. Love the coffee. And then I'm going to opt in for marketing. And then I'm all done. And it's as simple as that. So this form, like I said, can be put behind a QR code. So it's really easy if you're actually in venue to get somebody to um, review you just by pointing and saying, we'd love your review or we'd love your opinion. You could also obviously put the QR code on the bottom of a receipt um, once you've somebody's paid the bill. Um, but then obviously with Airship, the best part is doing a post journey email and a post journey trigger. Um, so Geo, would you please show us how to go from this screen to do it, popping it into a post journey email for us. Yep. Um, okay. So shall I just share my screen instead? Yeah, if you let me stop sharing mine. There we go. Um, okay. So. Okay. Um, can you see my screen all right now? Absolutely. Cool. Great. So, um, yeah, this is really easy. If anybody's ever done any kind of like post visit emails before, it's a very similar process. So, um, when you, you're happy with your form, so everything that Amy's just gone through, if you click share, um, the link that you want is this e airship email link. Um, so this will basically merge in any details that we already know about the guests. So they won't have to put in, say their email address again, um, the day of birth, if they've already given it that kind of thing. Um, you'd then head over to the email builder um, and build up your email. So I've done one already just to give you an example of kind of what this would look like. Um, but you just build your email as normal, pop a button in um, for the people to, uh, for your customers to click on. Um, and then within the URL, you would just paste in that, um, that link. So you can see it says like contact hash. Uh, and it's got this little bit of code at the end. So that's the bit that will merge in any details about the customer um, when the email sent. Um, when you're happy with it, you can test it and fill out the form yourself and see exactly what that looks like. Um, you can fill out your subject line and things like that within here as well. Um, and then when you're happy with the email, you would just head to email campaigns, date trigger, and then create new. Um, and within here, you can just set up that email. So you load it up as normal. So what did I call it? Feedback example. Um, you'd pop your subject line in if you haven't already saved that. So I could just put this as uh, how was your visit. Um, you choose the time that you want it to go at. So I could say I want this to go at 9 a.m. every day um, to people the day after they've had a booking. So on this drop down, you would just choose, say, like booking date. Um, and then you can choose what type of um, booking type you want to do as well. So it will probably just be for anybody and um, for this one. But if you do have different booking types, you can narrow that down within here um, and say, I just wanted to go to people who celebrated their birthday or whatever it might be. Um, if you just want it to go to everybody the day after, that's all you have to do. You would just then pop your tag content in, which is for reporting. So if you call this uh, feedback email, you can then choose to pull a report to group all of your tags together and see how your feedback emails are doing. Um, if you say wanted to narrow it down to certain criteria, you would click add audience. And then it takes you to your audience builder. So you could say things like, I only want it to go to people that have visited Sheffield, for example. Um, or you could exclude anybody. 
um, who has logged into the Wi-Fi if you also want to target them. So the thing within Airship to trigger emails is you would set different triggers up based on what you want to target. So you do a one day booking date, one day Wi-Fi date, and then maybe a one day room stay date as well. Um, so you can just exclude it within here. So if I was doing a booking seat to date and a Wi-Fi email, I would exclude anybody who's logged into Wi-Fi in the last day. Create date triggered flyer. Check that I'm happy with it all. And then click create. Oh, sorry, it's because I've got a few different windows open. But when I clicked create on there, that would then just save the email. Um, and then I would go in and just do um, another one for Wi-Fi as well, or room booking or any other trigger that you want to do. Um, so I could go into date trigger again. Um, load it up. So feedback example. Set this one to go at 9 a.m. again. But I'm going to do it one day after they've logged into Wi-Fi this time. Um, so I've got Wi-Fi interaction date on there. I'm going to add audience criteria. And then I'm going to exclude anybody who's booked a table this time. So it's just the exact opposite of the one that we've just done. Um, so anybody who booked a table in the last day, create the flyer. Check that I'm happy with all of this. So I'd use the same tag on this as well. So feedback email again. Um, and add tag word, click create. Um, and then you can add all of your UTMs like you normally would with any kind of um, email that you're setting as a trigger. Oops, apply that to all of your links, click next, and then that will just set that email up to go. So you can see down here, um, we've got a few different ones on this one, but we will have um, a feedback email set up on here. And then you can just go in and save it again. So if you wanted to pause it, for example, you would just pause it on here. And then you could set up other ones depending on what you want to do. So you can see it down there. You can preview it. Make sure you're happy with it. But that's it, really. You would just set that as a trigger. Um, and then you can go in and change your form, change your email. Um, if you do ever make any changes to your email, uh, you would just need to go back into this just to update your broadcast. So say that I wanted to change the copy or put a different image in or something like that. Once I'd done that and saved it, just click on these three little dots and click update broadcast. And then I can just pick that feedback example from that list and just update it. So you don't have to reset it up or anything, but you can tweak it if you want to. Um, that's it. Shall I pass back to you, Amy, to finish off? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I think Gio's just um, said something really important that just want to point out one of the really great things about airship feedback is that you can actually send it to everybody who has been in your venue where it uh, can come from your wi-fi interaction obviously your booking you're not just sending it to the lead booker you can actually send it to everyone who's been a part of the uh, reservation or the journey or who's just walked in so it's a really great way to capture as much guest feedback as you possibly can um i'm just going to switch over here to the reports just to show you the final part of it uh bear with me okay so i'm just going to go into uh view summary report here so you can find the feedback reports both directly on the feedback um dashboard or in reports bear with me okay um, so we've got feedback response export. So I did run this just before the call. So if I click view, so this is the entirety of every response that I've had today. Um, so this we can see Dan, um, we can see that he visited Sheffield, he gave it a nine and then gave us this lovely comment here. Um, so if I go back, so here is the feedbacks in the report screen. So by the way, I'm gonna click on that. If I then go to the summary and view the summary, I can actually see by location. So I can see that I have, you know, uh, for example, London and Sheffield are doing great. York, not so much. So I might inspire York to be a bit more proactive or put on some sort of incentive for them. Um, okay. Love it. Um, so I'm just going to, is it going to work for me again? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So 
as we said, so the uh, Airship Feedback is on trial at the moment. So everybody has it in place live until the 7th of October. Um, so please jump on, use it, put it straight into your emails, use it on your um, QR codes, any way you'd like to use it. Um, Geo's way of doing it for excluding, for example, your bookings and just doing it on your Wi-Fi, really lovely way of trialing it or removing your transactional uh, emails from uh, partners like Res Diary, things like that, and just using Airship as a full broadcast for your feedback is a really great way of just seeing what your guests feel like and how you can use it as a whole. Um, after the trial, I will just flick through here. Um, so just with uh, Airship, it's a really simple flat rate fixed cost per location per month to use Airship feedback um, based on the number of locations that you have. Um, for example, in, I, in my fake restaurant, I have two to five locations. So Airship feedback would be £30 per month per location for that. Um, if you need any support at all, we do have the Airship Academy articles, which we will send around after this uh, Zoom call. We have, uh, I did a walkthrough video as well that is now live that literally is a step by step. So if you wanted to follow that, you're more than welcome. Um, and all of our customer success team uh, are trained up fully on Airship Feedback and can help you with any questions that you've got moving forwards or actually implementing it. Uh, I, I'm happy to open the floor to questions if anybody's got any. Stop that share. No, doesn't look like it. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Um, well, Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. I'm really glad that we got to show you it and walk you through it. Um, you all have my email address. If you do have any other questions or need any more help, please feel free to reach out. Um, and also, obviously, you have Intercom on your uh, Airship account as well. Uh, so thank you very much. I hope you all have a great rest of Monday. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Bye.